Thank you. All right, well, I know that some of you came here this evening hoping that I would be lynched. <laughs> You're utterly convinced that I may have just walked right out of hell, and if you see the red horns going, just let me know and I'll, I'll push them down. <laughs> Others are more sympathetic and just want to see me utterly obliterated with arguments. Many are probably here guess to see Ed do a thing which usually amounts to something like shock and awe. I'm hoping that there's one or two of you out there that will listen to what I have to say with the hopes of learning something. Before I say anything else, I want to affirm to you my love, my adoration, my reverence, and my commitment to King Jesus. I declare that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I believe that Jesus is my Savior, my priest, my king, and deserves glory, honor, homage, and worship. I desire to give all the glory to Jesus that is due his name. However, I am restrained by scripture, by logic, and history from saying that Jesus is Yahweh, the one God of Israel. There is a distinction and a difference between Yahweh the one God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David, and the one mediator between the one God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that Ed wants to make this a debate about whether or not Jesus lived as a non-human person prior to his birth in Bethlehem. This is a smokescreen to hide your eyes from the real issue in this debate, which is whether or not Jesus is Yahweh, the one God of Israel. A pre-existent Messiah is not a pre-existent God. I want you to take note every time he brings up this issue as it will be indicative of the weakness of this case. If it was clear that Jesus was Yahweh, the one God of Israel, he would not have to rely on texts that may teach that the Messiah was pre-existent. It seems that his 21st century Western American Gentiles far removed from the life and times of Jesus, we think that if Jesus is not God Almighty, then he is nothing at all. If Jesus is not Yahweh, the one God of Israel, then who is he? Jesus posed the question to his disciples, who do you say that I am? The answer which was so powerful that it needed to be kept a secret, so incredible that it would have caused people to gasp, then gulp, and so inflammatory that it had the potential to lead to a mass uprising was that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. The idea and claim that Jesus is the Christ, that is the Messiah, was such a grandiose, jaw-dropping, bold affirmation that when Peter said these words, he was told by Jesus that it must have been a revelation from God. Tonight I want to take you through Scripture to show you that although Jesus is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, the Revealer, of God, the Word of God, the Anointed of God, life from God, the way to God, and is seated at God's right hand. He is not God. God's name is Yahweh, and He alone is the God of Israel. Now I'm going to take you through Scripture. The Old Testament could not be more explicit that Yahweh is the only one who is truly God. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 35 and 39 says, You were shown these things so that you might know that the Lord is God. Beside Him there is no other. Acknowledge and take to heart this day that Yahweh is God in heaven above and on earth below. There is no other. Isaiah 45 says, I am Yahweh and there is no other. Apart from me there is no God. It is important to recognize that Yahweh, the tetragrammaton, the four-letter word God, The four-letter word, which nobody knows for sure how to pronounce, is the personal name of God. Hezekiah prays to Yahweh, O Yahweh, God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You alone, O Yahweh, are God. That's 2 Kings 19, 15 and 19. Psalm 83, 18. Let them know you, whose name is Yahweh, that you alone are the Most High over all the earth. God is only one individual, one entity, one being, a single person. Number two, it is critical to realize 
that every single reaffirmation of monotheism in the New Testament is exclusively in reference to Yahweh, the God and Father of Jesus. Jesus, while praying to God, says this. And he's, he's, he's had the, the, the high priestly prayer. He says, this is eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one whom you've sent. If language has any meaning at all, only the Father of Jesus can truly be Yahweh, the only one who is truly God. Paul says in 1 Timothy 2.5, For if there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the God-man Christ Jesus. Wait a minute. He didn't say the God-man Christ Jesus. What he said was the man Christ Jesus. Paul could have said the God-man. He had those words within his vocabulary, yet he said the one mediator between God and man is the man Christ Jesus. There's, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, but there, is, but there is no God but one. For us Christians, there is but one God, he says, the Father, period. The perfect place for, for Paul to have said, but for us Christians, there is one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet what he said is, but for us, there's one God, the Father, period. You believe that there's one God, James says in chapter 2, verse 19? Good. Even the de- demons believe that and shudder. James is not talking about Jesus, but talking to Jews concerning their God, the one and only God of Israel. Every time the phrase, the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Israel is used in the New Testament, it is always in reference to Yahweh, the one and only true God and Father of Jesus. It is never used of Jesus. Acts 3.13 the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified, get this, His servant, Jesus. It's an amazing statement. Notice that Jesus is a servant of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Peter says, the God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead. Question, who is the one God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, and David, and Jesus? Answer, Yahweh, the one God of Israel, who raised Jesus from the dead. Murray Harris, who's one of the top evangelical Greek scholars who has written extensively on this topic, says, For the author of Hebrews, as well as for all the New Testament writers, one may suggest the God of our fathers, Yahweh, was no other, he says, no other than the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Point number four, Yahweh, the one and only true God of Israel, is the God of of Jesus. We don't typically think in these terms, but listen to Jesus. We know the text. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me hanging on the cross? Jesus says to Mary, who is clutching his feet after his resurrection, I am now sending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. We don't typically think of this. We read right over it, but it's right there in the text. If you want to see Trinitarian bias in the NIV, look up 13.3, 16.28, for it says, I'm yet returning to the Father. The Greek actually doesn't have that, but they actually, the, the translators put that in there. It's a little bit, a little bit tricky. Paul, Paul says in the book of Ephesians, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is how he opens up our letters. Praise be to the God and Father of Jesus. Peter says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Chapter 1, verse 3. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God and the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God. Furthermore, some say that this is only the human nature of Jesus. And Jesus says God does not have a God. However, when the scriptures speak of Jesus' Godship, and I believe it does, Calling Jesus God in Hebrews 1.8. One verse later, the text states, You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions. Even Jesus as God has a God who is over him, greater than him. Jesus is still subservient and subordinated, and Yahweh, his God, is superior. So notice that when Jesus is called God in Hebrews 1.8, that a verse later it says, God, your God, has anointed you. It's incredible. Point number five, the Bible makes a strict distinction and differentiation between God and man, the uncreated and the created, the creator and the creation. 
Hosea 11, verse 9, For I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. God is not a man, nor a son of man. Numbers 23, verse 19. Isaiah 31, 3, But the Egyptians are men and not God. So you see this distinction being made over and over. Simon Peter, after confessing Jesus as the Messiah, is told, This was not revealed to you by man or flesh and blood, but by my Father, no flesh and blood, in heaven. Matthew 16, 17. Paul says they worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Romans chapter 1, 25. One is either the creator or the creature, God or man, uncreated or created. And we, have, and we now know from these texts that God is not a man nor a son of man. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, Jesus says, but anyone who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Notice that Jesus is contrasting himself with God. Jesus is not saying if you blaspheme against the second person of the Trinity, that's cool, but the third person of the Trinity is unforgivable. No, the Holy Spirit in Hebrew is the Ruach HaKodesh, a second temple period circumlocution that is another name for the one God in heaven. Notice that Yahweh, the one God of Israel, during the ministry of Jesus, is still not a man. He resides in heaven. Jesus prays to him in his high priestly prayer, calling him the only true God. He prays again in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thy will. There's two wills here. Cries out to the one God on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Furthermore, to see all this as only the human nature of Jesus makes Jesus into a man with multiple personality disorder. You are the only true God. Wait a minute. I am. No, you are the Most High God. No, I am. You are, I am. You are, I am. And that's not what's happening. It would also make him a deceiver. When Jesus said, No man knows the day or hour, not even the angels, nor the Son, but only the Father, did Jesus know or did he not know? If his, if his God nature knew, but he claimed ignorance, that would be a sleight of hand. It would be like someone asking you to borrow money to buy lunch, and you said, I don't have any money. But what they didn't know is that you were only talking about your right pocket and not your left. It, is, it also has the problem of giving Jesus two centers of consciousness, two egos, two persons, one that knows and another does that, that does not know. Psalm, this is point number six, Psalm 110.1, arguably the most quoted and alluded to text in the New Testament from the Old Testament, distinguishes between Yahweh and David's Lord, the Messiah. The text reads like this, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The word L-O-R-D, all capitalized in your Bibles, is translated from the Tetragrammaton, which means Yahweh, the untranslatable, exclusive, personal name of the one God of Israel. Alternatively, there's two lords in this text, right? The word my Lord is translated from Adoni, a title of respect, reverence used of human dignitaries 195 times meaning master, owner, and Lord, but never used or applied to the one God of Israel, Yahweh. Jesus is placed firmly in the category of Adoni, that is my Lord, by authors of the New Testament, and not Yahweh, which is the name of Jesus' God. Peter, after quoting this exact text, says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord, that is Adoni, and Christ, that is Messiah. Notice that the one God of Israel made Jesus Adoni, that is David's Lord in Psalm 110.1. Jesus is now the one Lord Messiah. Psalm 110.1 makes sense of all the texts which speak of one God and one Lord. Now you go through the New Testament and you're going to see this over and over again. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 8.6, For us Christians there's one, but one God, the Father, and there is but one Lord. This is Adoni, Jesus the Messiah, he says. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. There is one Lord, that's Adoni, Jesus, one faith, one baptism. Paul, Paul says, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all.